in this video tutorial, I am going to teach you how to make the Gila Hex copper wire bracelet. This is a bracelet with six sides in a spiral fashion, therefore the name Gila Hex. You're going to need to make seven guide wires that are 12 inches long. And this is a great, easy way to get them work hardened and straight. So I have coiled up six coils. Three of them are clockwise. Three of them are counterclockwise. And I'm using a full row of pins on the flat wearable wire weaver. And I'm going to intersperse each one of the coils between each of the pins using a guide wire on the outer edge to hold everything in place. Keeps the uh, coils from popping back out towards you. You want to anneal your coils prior to doing this. It's going to make getting them in between the pins so much easier. And just trimming off the ends and I'm going to continue to do this going back and forth between clockwise and counterclockwise coils and going to be doing this six times. Annealing is nothing more than using a torch. Propane torch is, uh, is your best choice uh, for something that's inexpensive. And you're going to heat the coils until they're red hot, quench them in cool water, and then I put mine into a warm pickling solution in a crock pot that is dedicated for pickling. And that will get everything nice and soft and easy for you to intersperse the coils between one another. So now that you can't do it without annealing, it's just that uh, the coils will be very, very springy and a lot more difficult to work with. A lot of communities have maker spaces. You might want to check for one in your community. And they have all different kinds of equipment if you are unable to do this kind of work where you live. So after the sixth coil, I'm using the seventh guide wire and going along the outer edge of that last coil. I'm going to take the guide wires and I'm going to turn them up and that just keeps them from sliding out while we're doing some uh, manipulating of the uh, bracelet at this point. And I'm just going to lift that off of the pins and set that weaver aside. Now I'm going to remove the guide wires from the outer edges of both of the coils. I'm going to fold everything together so it's in a cylinder and I'm going to reinsert one of the guide wires to lock those two sections together. So what we've created here is a six-sided cylinder with spiral coils or helix coils. And just bending the ends of that again. So you can see we've created a nice cylinder here. I'm going to push everything together. Anneal is necessary. You'll probably want to anneal several times during this process once things become too difficult to work with the metal is not moving you want to anneal and pickle again and then continue on just using a burnishing tool to pack my coils tight and to ensure even spacing between the coiled sections
This bracelet uses 16 gauge wires for the entire project. I'm using a swaging block and I'm going to take these six sides and I'm going to flatten them down so it becomes a two-sided bracelet. So there's three coils on the top and three coils on the bottom. So I'm striking down and towards the right and that is pushing all of those coils towards my right. I did anneal again before doing this. Once I've got control of that and got those going in the right direction, now I'm using a steel bench block and continuing to flatten down the bracelet. Stopping in between adjusting any of the wires as necessary. We carry a number of these tools on our website, the swage block, the metal bench block, um, the um, amazing wire weaving tool. This is just one of the types of projects you can do on the flat wearable wire weaver. We have other videos uh, using the weaver and we'll continue to produce videos that will feature the weaver and doing a number of different projects. So I'm just continuing to work the bracelet flat, make sure all of my spacing is even, tapping it down on the edges as well so you get that funky curve out of it. And this also work hardens it. So I've got it in the swage block here. And what I'm doing at this point is giving a slight domed effect to the bracelet. And just because I've done these things in this way doesn't mean that you have to do them this way. You know, it's always great to put your own twist on your jewelry. In the end of the video, you'll see a picture of a different uh, style of helix bracelet that was made using 18 gauge wires. And instead of flattening it down, I left it in the cylinder fashion, but twisted it. Once all the coils were put together, I took and twisted the whole cylinder. And you'll see that picture in the end. I always make the bracelets longer than their desired length just because the ends are never going to be perfect and I can cut that stuff off. This is a little mini pipe cutting tool, Harbor Freight uh, item, very inexpensive. And I'm cutting off a section of copper tubing which has a 3 8 inch ID or inner diameter. Very easy tool to use. You just keep tightening the blade against the tubing and spinning it around and tightening again and spinning it around until you have separated off a section. It creates a burr on the edge, so I'm just using a big, large, flat file. This is a cheap Harbor Freight file and smoothing off the edges. And just giving a little bit of a, a chamfer or a bevel to the outer edges there. Now I'm going to flatten that down and we're going to make that oval.
So it's not fitting. So what do we do when it doesn't fit? Well, in one of the recent videos, I showed a handheld, uh, very simple uh, swaging tool. In the case of this bracelet, I'm going to show you how to open the opening and create a more oval opening using a plier, a swaging plier. You'll want to anneal during the swaging of the tubing if you're making a bracelet this wide because if you try to open the tubing too far while it is hardened you're going to split the tubing so just keep test fitting opening it up and test fitting it just using the swaging tool and adjusting the opening until it fits just right. You want to get it at least halfway into the tubing. Not necessarily you have to put it all the way in, but at least halfway in. You want to have a good contact between the tubing and the coils of the bracelet for the solder to attach the two together. I'm just going to trim off some of the uh, the wires. Just make things fit a little bit easier. I'm going to use one of my burnishing tools to help push a couple of those coils up underneath and fitting inside of this cap. So whatever it takes to get the cap to fit, pinching, squeezing, poking, sanding, filing, whatever it takes to get everything to fit properly. It's preferable to have that on there snugly. It's gonna make soldering much easier. Or in the comments, I keep being told I am pronouncing it incorrectly. It's soldering. I've got a little uh, piece of 20 gauge decorative flat copper that I'm going to be using for the top of this end cap. I'm going to solder that on using some copper sire, solder or solder. And I'm going to trim that off. After that's been uh, quenched and pickled, I'm going to trim that off and sand everything really smooth, file it refit it make sure everything fits properly then i'm going to solder or solder the cap on to the end of the bracelet i've sprayed it with some mighty flux and using my torch i'm heating that till it's red hot and putting solder in flipping it over and doing the same thing on the opposite side. And then it gets quenched and pickled and move on to the other end. I determined how long to make my bracelet and now I'm trimming everything off of the opposite end and going to repeat the process and make a second cap. In order to make this job easier, I'm using a vertical belt sander. Uh, you want to keep water handy because it gets quite hot doing this. And just continue to quench it in the water and work along until you get everything smooth. 
you want to have a seamless look between the uh, decorative piece on the end and the tubing itself. I did all the polishing and buffing and cleaning off camera. I do show that type of work in other recent videos if you would like to see any of the finish work. And once it's all cleaned, then it goes on to a bracelet forming mandrel and shaped. This also work hardens it so it holds the bracelet shape. Just a little bit of manipulating by hand and adjusting. And what we end up with is a gorgeous and amazing looking bracelet. This is actually very well suited for men. This was a very large, chunky piece. And you can see the decoration on the end of the end cap there from the patterned wire that I used. Makes really a beautiful bracelet. Here is the alternative where I left the coils as a cylinder and then just twisted the cylinder before making the end caps and a clasp closure. If you have any questions, please post them and I'd be happy to answer. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe.